Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here with Let's Talk Money and what is easily one of the most popular topics on the channel. And you know I love those dividend stocks and the only thing better than collecting that cash flow is doing it every single month. And while most dividend stocks pay out every three months, there are actually hundreds of funds, ETFs, and individual stocks that pay out every month. But a lot of them are gonna be the worst investment you can make. One problem is a lot of these highest paying monthly dividend stocks are closed in funds. They draw investors in with those dividend yields of 12 and 15% and higher, but if you look at the share price, you're actually losing money. Look at these two monthly dividend pairs, down 60% over the last year, and it wasn't just on that coronavirus crash. These stocks and a lot of those high yield funds see a constant loss to the stock price. And while this is happening, the dividend is cut as well. So you might start off with maybe a $20 share price and a $2.40 dividend, which is 12%, but then the shares fall by 20% over the year to $16 a share. Now this dividend is cut to $1.92 each, which is still a 12% yield on that new lower price. So the fund is still attracting new investors, but you're asked out because not only do you have a loss if you're ever gonna sell, but you're also collecting those lower dividends than you expected. Okay, you can see it's a touchy subject with me. I hate these dividend yield traps, the stocks that promise those double digit yields and, and then just lose your money because it doesn't have to be that way. There are some great monthly dividend stocks out there that not only put that cash in your pocket every single month, but also are gonna give you those capital returns on a higher stock price. So what I wanna do with this video is show you those best monthly dividend stocks, the highest paying that are not only gonna keep up that dividend payment, but not stress you out over the stock price. We'll look at my seven favorite stocks here, seven dividend stocks I hold in my own portfolio. We're also gonna talk about some of the different types of monthly dividend stocks, you know, how to find the best and, and some of the risks that could wipe out your portfolio. So make sure you stick around for that. Before we get started though, you know I gotta send a shout out to all my Bowtie brothers and sisters, all you in the nation Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. Now you already know I'm not a fan of those closed in funds. And not only do they tend to lose your money, but the fees are just ridiculous. And many of these are gonna be charging expense ratios of like 2% and higher. And the reason is another of the hidden traps in these funds. To get those 12% and higher dividend yields, these funds use an insane amount of leverage. So they're investing in stocks paying maybe 6% yields, but the fund is gonna borrow twice as much as its assets to invest. For example, a $100 million closed-end fund might borrow another $100 million to invest $200 million in those 6% yielding stocks. That would give it the $12 million in dividends. It would actually be 12% on the actual fund assets. And the problem here is that one, they pay interest on that borrowed money and they pass that down to investors through those expenses. Also though, and this is a big problem with investing on margin, anytime the market falls, those investments take an even bigger tumble and the fund is gonna lose more money. So moral of the story here, Nation, make sure you know what you're investing in. If it's a fund, is it an ETF, so one of those exchange traded funds, or is it a closed end fund? And 99% of the time, I would just avoid these closed end monthly dividend pairs altogether. Now, I do like those monthly dividend ETFs, but we'll do a separate video on that because today I just wanna focus on those seven monthly dividend stocks. Make sure you tap that subscribe button though so you don't miss the dividend funds video as well. Now picking these dividend stocks we'll talk about, I had to be careful because most of these monthly pairs are gonna be in two business types, real estate investment trusts or REITs and business development corporations or BDCs. REITs are a special company type that owns property or mortgages. Now BDCs lend money to small and medium sized businesses as well as take an equity stake. So they're kind of like a bank and a private equity investor for small business. And both of these business types get a special tax break if they distribute the majority of their profits as dividends to investors. So, so you get investments with amazing yields, but there's also gonna be some risks here that most investors don't really understand. Both of these business types are highly affected by interest rate changes. You know, real estate is highly leveraged with debt, so, so interest expense is gonna be a big part of the business. Those mortgage REITs, they're gonna borrow on short-term rates and then invest in those long-term mortgages, so obviously directly tied to those rates. BDCs here are basically banks, so again, directly tied to the changes in interest rates. Now the problem with this, other than falling rates just make it harder for these types of businesses to make any money, is that if you're out there looking for the monthly dividend stocks and you just jump into a handful, then you're likely to end up with a portfolio that's really concentrated in just these BDCs and the REITs. For example, of the 68 monthly dividend stocks and the funds that I follow, nearly half, 29 of them are in these two business models. And if half of your portfolio is in just these two types of businesses, then when these interest rate changes do come along or some other changes that affect these two business types, your portfolio is gonna be in trouble. 
like you're eating ramen noodles for the rest of your life kind of trouble. So for our seven monthly dividend stocks portfolio, not only did I look for those highest paying stocks, but I also wanted to create a portfolio that was diversified across sectors and business type. AG&C Investment Corporation, ticker AG&C, is our mortgage REIT pick with a 10.7% dividend yield and a good bet on that M REIT theme. AG&C holds a $103 billion investment portfolio with $99 billion of that in agency mortgage-backed securities. Dividends have come down over the past few months on that crash in rates, which is something that you would expect in an M REIT. As long-term rates come down, the company is collecting less on those mortgage investments. Book value has been ugly for all the mortgage rates because of that interest rate picture, and it's fallen to $17.52 per share for AG&C. Now that means the shares are trading well under their book value, which is a pretty good place in terms of value. One bright spot though is that the net interest spread, that's the difference between the interest rates on the investments minus those short-term rates on, on which the company borrows, that spread jumped in the third quarter, so it could be a signal of better profitability ahead. Analysts have a low target of $13 per share and a high around $16.50 each over the next year, so potentially some upside return besides that dividend if the, if the interest rate spread stays higher like it is. This next one is a smaller company, but a strong business, Gladstone Investment Corporation, ticker GAIN, and it's 8.4% dividend yield. Now, Gladstone is one of those business development corporations, the BDCs for what's called the middle market companies. Now, these are companies in the U.S. with earnings ranging from three to $20 million, so not quite big enough to list on the stock market, but still big enough to need more credit and funding that can be provided by a traditional bank. And why I like gain here is because it takes a higher equity share than most of these BDCs. And Gladstone's target investment is 25% equity and 75% debt versus the traditional BDC that's going to look for less than a 10% equity stake in the company. That higher equity ownership might mean higher risk here, but it's also going to mean higher returns on these investments. And we see that in Gaines' history of return on equity, which is well above the industry average. The five-year average ROE of 17% is over three times the median ROE for that BDC group, and, and even though near-term returns have come down, it's still well above the average for the group. Gladstone's current portfolio is spread across 28 companies and 14 industries, so a level of diversification there that should help it continue with those returns, even in a sluggish economy. Dividends have consistently stayed around seven cents a share with some special payments of nine cents a share distributed regularly. Our next monthly dividend stock is a longtime favorite, Shaw Communications, ticker SJR, a Canadian telecom giant paying a 4.9% yield. Now, Shaw has historically been a wireline business, but the acquisition of Wynn Mobile in 2016 is really starting to come through with some growth and, and making wireless the company's biggest profit center. Now, the company is investing in its network improvements with deployment of 700 and 600 megahertz spectrum that, that it acquired in recent auctions and really becoming a player in that wireless market. Shaw has $130 million on the balance sheet and no debt maturities until 2023, so definitely the financial strength that we're looking for and the business isn't something that's going to take a big hit on that shelter-in-place environment, so, so first or second quarter earnings might actually be pretty decent. Now, dividends have stayed fairly consistent even through the lockdowns, and as a telecom company, it shouldn't have a problem maintaining that payout. We've got price targets from seven analysts here, with targets from $18.50 on the low end, just above where it's trading now, to 32% higher at $23.67 per share over the next year. So great dividend and that upside price return. Gladstone Commercial, ticker GOOD, is a diversified REIT specializing in industrial and office property paying an 8.2% dividend yield. The company owns more than 15 million square feet at 122 properties in 28 states across the United States. Leases are spread across 106 tenants in 19 industries, so extremely diversified here. Occupancy has held steady at 96.6%, and the average lease term of seven and a half years here means that even a more severe recession should support the rent. And that stability supports one of the most stable monthly dividends you'll find at 12.5 cents per share every single month. Just one price target here at $22 per share, about 16% over the current price, and a great long-term investment that will just keep on paying. Even as stocks in the energy space have remained week this year, I wanted to include Pembina Pipeline, ticker PBA, and its 7.4% monthly dividend. Pembina is a midstream oil company, which means it makes its money on transporting oil and gas through pipelines, as well as gas processing and some marketing services. So overall, a diversified business model here. 
Now, the company has had to put some projects on hold to protect that cash flow, but it's still maintained its triple B credit rating and it has $2.5 billion in available liquidity. So, so there's no real solvency risks here. The company has maintained earnings growth through prior crises and has actually been able to make some opportunistic acquisitions like, like a recent purchase of Kinder Morgan assets. Pimbina has historically kept its monthly dividend around 15 cents a share. Then it just distributes any free cash flow through a special dividend like the 21 cents per share payment in May. Analyst price targets range from $22 a share on the low end to as high as $33 per share over the next year. Main Street Capital, ticker MAIN, is another favorite among dividend investors for a 7.7% yield. Now, Mainstream is another business development corporation specializing in loans and equity investments in those mid-sized businesses. The company has regularly increased its dividend, now at 20.5 cents per share, along with special dividends of over $4 per share distributed since 2013. The company had 182 portfolio investments as of the first quarter, with the largest representing just 3% of total fair value. So, so a hit to any of these single investments isn't going to hurt the shares that much. Now, one thing you always want to watch for in these BDC stocks, these business development corporations, is to compare the effective yield on the company's investments with the dividend yield that it's offering on the stock. So in this case, Main Street earns a weighted average yield of 9.7% on those loan investments. And it's going to tell you this in the financial statements. Then it's going to turn around and pay out 7.7% in monthly dividends. So that average yield that's above the committed dividend yield is going to be a must for that dividend sustainability. Realty income, ticker O, is easily the most popular REIT and maybe one of the most popular of all stocks with a 4.9% dividend paid on a monthly basis. Realty income has 50 years of operating history and owns over 6,000 properties in 49 states, Puerto Rico, and the United Kingdom. Retail stores have been slammed this year. Even though 83% of the rental revenue is coming from retail on this stock, I'm okay with this one because it's diversified across some of the safer types of retail property like, like convenience, dollar stores, drug, and grocery. Lease terms average nine years and occupancy has never been below 96% for these properties. Rent growth isn't terrifically strong here at 1% annualized, but it's consistent and supports that dividend. Now, the dividend here isn't the highest among REITs, but investors love the monthly payouts and the company has reported 88 consecutive quarterly increases. That 4.5% annualized dividend growth has beaten that 2.9% average for REITs, so, so expect this one to keep on paying. Click on the video to the right for my three favorite monthly dividend ETFs, three monthly dividend funds that will pay your bills. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.